Hi guys, welcome back to Promet Lectures. In this video, we're going to cover the macrovascular complications of diabetic patients. So let's focus first on the pathology of the macrovascular complications. For this one, we have three steps. The first one's gonna be the non-enzymatic glycosylation. And this one, of course, uh, is in regards to excess glucose in blood. Remember that it will attach to amino groups in certain proteins. Now, this is going to cause the production of advanced glycosylation products, which uh, are going to be present in blood and at the basement membrane of the blood vessels. This is going to increase the blood vessel permeability to proteins, and uh, that is going to involve as increased arteriogenesis with an inflammatory reaction, and of course, uh, hyaline arterial sclerosis, and remember that these two conditions are going to cause a downstream infarction in such tissues. Now, the presenting macrovascular complications, remember that it's going to be the number one cause of death in diabetic patients, with around 80% of the deaths from either myocardial infarction, congestive heart failure development, or stroke. And now, the most important factor for this is going to be the atherosclerosis development in these patients. Always, when you're asked, remember that these uh, diabetic mellitus patients are considered to have an equivalent of coronary artery disease. Remember that if some patient has coronary artery disease already, they have an increased risk for myocardial infarction, for peripheral vascular disease, for congestive heart failure, and stroke. And so if a patient does not have coronary artery disease but has diabetes mellitus, it is considered to have an equivalent of such. And, of course, remember that um, it is the number one cause of non-traumatic amputation of the lower extremity. And this has two components. It is because of the peripheral vascular disease that atherosclerosis is going to cause. And of course, because of the neuropathy and the microvascular complications that we're gonna talk in another video. Now, in regards to management for these patients, remember that regulating the glycated hemoglobin levels with um, certain levels such as 7 to 8 percent or less than 7 percent is only going to have a benefit on the microvascular component of the chronic complications. But for the microvascular complications, what we usually do is try to attain certain lipid goals. And these ones are going to be LDL levels less than 100, uh, HDLs uh, higher than 50, triglycerides less than 150. And we can achieve this through diet, of course, exercise implementation, and the addition of statins. Now, statins are going to be pretty important in diabetic patients since these are the, the standard of therapy for the lipid goal um, management. And now, remember that statins uh, promote these effects. They greatly lower the LDLs, slightly increase the HDLs, and slightly decrease the triglycerides. So that's the reason behind statins being the ones that have proven the most benefit in regards to cardiovascular morbidity and mortality for diabetic patients. Now, there's going to be other therapies that are lipid uh, directed, but they're going to be further discussed in other videos. And patients may need these managements further in their uh, chronicity of diabetes, but remain uh, confident that statins are going to be, for the most part, the most common used therapy in regards to lipid management in both diabetic and non-diabetic patients.